Uh, Gabe's here from Doers to talk about some amazing new products that are available finally in Canada. Amazing, 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 amazing. <laughs> um, but let's just do some really basic scotch stuff. Yeah. I never had scotch before, say. What is the basic difference between a 12-year-old scotch, a 15-year-old scotch, an 18-year-old scotch, 21, so on and so sure. forth? Sure. Now, when you mention you talk about the difference between a 12, a 15, and 18 uh, plus year old whiskeys, really what you're talking about is the age statement of the whiskey. It's important to know that age statements are not necessarily a reflection of quality, but really what an age statement means is how long has that whiskey been aging? So when you see an age statement on a bottle of whiskey, what it represents is the youngest liquid in that bottle. So with Aberfeldy 12, all the liquid in that bottle is at least 12 years old. Whiskey really, for the most part, it's about the relationship with the wood that it's sitting in and the weather outside of that wood. Because casts and barrels, they act like lungs. Pushing that liquid in and out of the wood is where it gets around 70% of that whiskey's character. You're pulling out these tannin, these proteins that cause the whiskey to become sweet in character, smoky from the oak in character as well. But to make scotch, you have to make it and age it in Scotland a minimum of three years. At 12 years, you're talking about at least 12-year-old whiskey that uses a combination of American oak casts and sherry casts, or Spanish oak casts. Blended those together to give you Aberfeldy single malt. Single malt meaning the product of one single distillery. These age statements, while they again are not necessarily a reflection of quality, they do kind of typify benchmarks in the body of the whiskey as well. Whereas if you have a younger whiskey, it's going to be more light and delicate. So if you look at the tiers of a 12-year-old whiskey, when you give your glass a swirl, a lot of folks think, okay, it's time to aerate the whiskey or the wine. Actually, what you're doing is you're looking for this line that forms around the glass. Okay. And this line gives way to legs or tiers as we call them. And if the tiers stick at the top, as you're seeing, these are quite sticky up at the top here. You'll tell that that whiskey is much older in character. Uh, and what you mean by that is it's going to sit on your palate longer. If the tiers were really thin and flew very quick, that would tell you it's a younger whiskey and it's probably going to be lighter, more delicate. And you expect things like orchard fruits to come forward, floral notes to come forward. So with age, you're just going to get more body. With younger whiskeys, more light and delicate. Honestly, at the end of the day, don't think of it as age is older is better. And don't think of it as single malt whiskey is better than blended whiskey either. Blended whiskey is using, in Dewar's case, up to 40 different whiskeys. So it's much more wow. complex, right? Whereas single malt whiskey is from the product of one single distillery. There you have it. Scotch 101. Cheers. Cheers.